what if the decision boundary is non-linear till now we have seen a linear classifier SVM looks to be doing a good job we just need to find a linear classifier that has the maximum margin what if the classes are like this there are some positive classes then negative classes again some positive classes or there are some positive negative and negative positive negative and then positive in that case just fitting one line and then finding the maximum margin our theory might not work I mean in our earlier examples the decision boundary was clearly linear but SVM struggles to classify when the decision boundary is non-linear when there is no direct linear decision boundary SVM doesn't know how to fit a model so what we need to do is uh, even in fact SVM has no direct theory to fit a non-linear decision boundary models so what we need to do in this type of scenarios so the original model was uh, proposed by Wapnik uh, in 63 it was uh, majorly focusing on uh, constructing a linear classifier to fit a non-linear classifier or to fit a boundary that is uh, kind of like that will suit or to fit a model that will suit this type of non-linear classifiers what we need to do is we might have to create new variables or new dimensions in the data and then see in that new uh, increased dimensional space the objective space in that space the data the classes are linearly classified classifiable or not this is called a kernel tree so what do we do in kernel tree we try to increase the number of dimensions and see try to make the nonlinear data linear in a higher dimensional space what exactly is that let's look at this example in this example we have zeros and then uh, ones and then zeros like class 1 class 2 again class 1 and this can't be directly linearly classifiable so what we try to do is we create a new variable called x2 there is just one variable called x1 here we create a new variable called x2 which is just x1 square so instead of just taking x1 one variable we will now use two variables x1 and x2 so that so we increase the dimension of this data set by one more uh, new dimension by adding new variable then what did we do then we can see that given x1 and x2 we can see this transformed this whole our objective space transformed into new dimensional in new dimensional space we can clearly see a single linear decision boundary so a single linear decision boundary is not possible in uh, uh, lower dimensional space we can increase the number of dimensions and then uh, see whether we can fit a linear decision boundary so SVM doesn't have direct theory for nonlinear decision boundary but we can increase the dimensions and we can use something called kernel trick to fit a nonlinear decision boundary or to to address the nonlinear decision boundary problem kernel trick is the most important and trickiest part of SVM because most of the problems that we see are not linearly separable objective spaces uh, the classes might not be linearly separable always so when there is a non-linear scenario then we have to use the kernel trick so in earlier example we used a function called phi of x that is equal to x comma x square to transform the data into a higher dimensional space uh, in that higher dimensional space we could easily fit a linear decision boundary so the function fx is known as the kernel function so this particular process is known as kernel trick in this example if you see uh, the classes are again non-linearly uh, I mean it's they are not linearly separable then we can use a function phi of x uh, which is a kernel function it whatever it can be then we transform them into a new space in that new higher dimensional space uh, uh, or we choose the phi of x in such a way that in that new higher dimensional space we can definitely find a, a linearly separable plane hyperplane 
Uh, Kenelric solves nonlinear decision boundaries. Uh, they are very much similar to hidden layers in neural network. Like Kenelric creates new variables in the data set. Even hidden layers in neural network kind of uh, create intermediate outputs. So uh, Kenelric simply increases the number of dimensions or number of variables uh, to make the decision boundary or non-linear decision boundary in lower dimensional space that is within two dimensions if the decision boundary is non-linear uh, we use kernel trick so that we create new dimensions so that the non-linear decision boundary in lower dimensional space uh, will be uh, projected as a linear decision or transformed as a linear decision boundary in higher di dimensional space in simple terms kernel tricks makes non-linear decision boundary to linear how because it will be in higher dimensional space we can always find a linear decision boundary so uh, in this particular example example 1 uh, there is one variable x1 if we use a kernel function phi of x that is x comma x square then we can transform that to this format and obviously x square looks like a parabolic curve in that we can find a uh, linearly separable plane this particular example where it looks like a circle and uh, within the circle there looks like there are class 1 outside the circle there are class 2 uh, here we can uh, see this uh, two dimensional space can be map mapped onto a three dimensional space uh, with a kernel using x1 square x2 square square root of 2 into x1 x2 if we use that then we can find in three dimensional space that is one dimensional additional in that space we can find a linearly separable plane hyperplane using svm as usual so some of the kernel function examples uh, we have seen uh, square function and then square root function there are so many kernel functions these are some of the standard kernel functions that we come across uh, uh, multiple times when we are solving problems on image processing etc we use a qth degree polynomial kernel function uh, we can use sigmoid kernel function that will convert uh, uh, you know every problem very much similar to neural network Gaussian kernel function when uh, we have absolutely no data or no prior knowledge on the data set then we can use uh, Gaussian kernel function linear kernel function when we are uh, solving uh, a specific type of problems uh, related to text classification we can use linear kernel radial basis function RBF this is one of the most important uh, most widely used kernel function when we have no idea no knowledge on the data set we can blindly use radial kernel function that will uh, try to find out uh, I mean that will try to map the low dimensional space to higher dimensional space then make it uh, linearly separable in the higher dimensional space there are many more kernel functions uh, most widely like in some tools by default rbf is chosen as kernel function so how do we choose the kernel function I, probably that is the most trickiest part of svm uh, choosing the kernel function there is no specific theory that tells us that uh, uh, you know you should choose this kernel function or this is the kernel function equation that you should use there is nothing like that there is no proven theory that will tell us which kernel function is going to work but there is a lot of research going on that there are some just uh, kind of uh, suggestions uh, these are some of the suggestions that were given and uh, kernel function is most important because that kind of transforms the data and that data will be indeed used in the final model building so in practice a lower degree polynomial kernel or RBF kernel uh, are generally uh, used as initial trials choosing kernel function is almost similar to choosing number of hidden layers in neural network both of them have no proven theory to arrive at a, a standard value as a first step we choose uh, these two kernel functions that are low degree polynomial and RBF kernel function now let us try to understand the kernel trick transforming the data into higher dimensions using an example we will use R tool for it so in this example we have to take a software user profile data then we'll see how many variables are there 
then we'll try to build a model to predict the uh, output uh, the output here is uh, whether a person is still using the software active or not we'll see that uh, data set in some time and then we'll build a model we'll see what type of relation is is whether it is non-linear or linearly separable if it is uh, not linearly separable then we will uh, try to use a kernel trick to solve this uh, problem so let's get into that so here is the data set software user profiles data so we can clearly see uh, this is just a simulated data so you can clearly see that as age increases so there are many users who are either very uh, low in age or uh, software user profiles there are many users who are uh, in this region and then uh, no users and then users again so looks like uh, this is not a linearly separable uh, problem there are two classes class 1 and class 2 but uh, red and uh, uh, blue black but they are not linearly separable but still we will try to go ahead and try to build a model uh, with active versus age as age increases we can see there are uh, profiles so let us see some sample data here in this one so it has just two variables age versus active or not so given the age uh, that is not active and then uh, as age increases it is active again as age increases further it is not active so that's what we can see in the graph but still we'll go ahead and try to build a linear SVM model and then uh, see what is the accuracy so we have built the linear SVM model so if we don't mention anything by default the kernel is radial so to make the kernel linear so to really build the linear SVM model we need to mention kernel equal to linear then we will see the confusion matrix to understand what is the accuracy so we fit a linear model in that particular linear model what is the accuracy of this a particular confusion matrix looks like the accuracy is fairly low it is just a 0.64 in fact uh, if we see the overall confusion matrix there is nothing uh, that is predicted as one so this model is highly uh, biased and definitely this is not a good fit for our data because the data the age and active status they are linearly uh, they are not linearly related they are non linearly classified so let us try to use the kernel trick and then uh, try to see whether we can fit a better model even before that we will try to uh, manually create a higher dimension we will try to map it to a higher dimension so we will create a new variable called age normalize so first we will normalize age and then we will find square of age so that is like age in to the power 2 so we are creating a new variable and then with the new variable and active user status we can see that there is a huge change within uh, active status the target variable the two classes looks like they can be linearly separable now now with these two new variables even if we put a linear kernel model even if we put linear uh, SVM we should be able to divide them so there is age and the new variable that is age square that we just have created so from one variable we have uh, imposed into higher dimensions now let's try to fit an SVM model on this new data set SVM is fit uh, and kernel is again linear now we'll try to see the confusion matrix and uh, see what is the accuracy so accuracy is almost one and there are no points that are wrongly classified so that is the basic 
trick of uh, kernel function or basic use of kernel function where we can even fit an SVM for non-linear classification problems we just need to create a new variable that that is like almost creating a new dimension in fact we don't need to do uh, this whole process we can just directly use uh, a kernel function that is inbuilt within R we don't need to use linear function and then uh, manually create new variable we can use directly age variable that is just one variable instead we just uh, give the kernel function that is uh, directly we can take radi um, by default R takes radial kernel function or we can just mention the kernel function that we want to use so I will just use age variable but uh, we will use the kernel function as well this time so R has automatically taken radial fun kernel function and then uh, it will try to fit a model using just one variable but using the kernel trick automatically choosing on its own in here also we can see the accuracy has improved a lot and then uh, even the model is better just that we have used a radial basis function rbf kernel function in this example